<laughs> All right. Usually when I tell people that one of my majors is geography, concentration, and GIS, I get puzzled looks. A lot of people don't know what GIS or Geographic Information Systems is, and they sure don't see the connection with my other major, Anthropology. I'm going to discuss what the principles of GIS and its specific relation to anthropology is. This includes what GIS is, the importance and difference of raster and vector in GIS, who uses GIS, and the way GIS is used in the field of my other major, Anthropology. First, I'll talk about what exactly GIS is. The Economic and Social Resource Institute, or ESRI, a leading computer program provider at GIS, describes geographic information systems as integrating many technologies that have over the last few years become more advanced. These technologies are hardware, like computers, monitors, and hard drives, software, like ArcMap and Art Catalog that were created by ESRI, and data, which is computer, a computerized body of facts. GIS is used to capture, manage, analyze, and display all forms of geographic information. GIS also, it also allows us to understand data in many ways that reveal trends in the form of maps, globes, and charts. Turning data from a GPS receiver or a satellite into a visual map is one of the vital parts of GIS. Now I'll discuss vector data. Rafael Quimpo does an excellent job of describing vectorization in his book, GIS Modules and Distributed Models of the Watershed. Vector data consists of points, which are a single x and y coordinate, lines, which are multiple x and y coordinates next to each other, and polygons, which are multiple lines connected together. The other kind of geospatial data is raster. This type of data is more simplistic, and readily available compared to vector data. Rafael Quimpo does this, discusses this data in the same book as well. He points out that raster data is made up of individual grid cells that represent a part of Earth's physical surface. The grids are made up of rows that run vertically and columns that run horizontally. One major problem with raster data is that it distorts the actual size and shape of an object that causes a stair-step formation along linear edges. So as you can see, the, this creates a stair-step formation when it gets distorted up there. And then this here is what happens when you combine vector and raster data. And it, you can see the different layers. And what it does is when you layer them together, it gives you a more real-world look for the map reader so they can relate a lot easier to it compared to lines or dots or polygons or just squares. So, there are many kinds of organizations that use a GIS for their own intended purpose. This includes businesses, governments, and natural resources, and many others. My other major, anthropology, is beginning to use GIS at excavation sites around the world. James Connolly explains this relation in his book, Geographical Information Systems and Archaeology. First, GIS is used in the management of archaeological resources. Archaeologists must record and manage data at sites at all times. A GIS is able to record important information using spatial databases instead of the standard index cards and spreadsheets used today. Um, another use of GIS in archaeology is during the excavation of a site. Tasks in the field of archaeology include cataloging photographic records, detailed analysis of artifacts, and changes in the soil at site plans during excavation. Computer programs such as Vulkan provide tools for building and visualizing these types of data in three dimensions. The ability to build a 3D stratigraphic model of an excavation is an exciting possibility that has yet to be fully explored. A third use of a GIS in archaeology has to do with landscape archaeology. A GIS allows archaeologists to use intensive point plotting of all artifacts across an excavated region. And a fourth use of GIS in archaeology is concerned with past human behavior. Dynamic modeling is used today at na national parks to predict visitor movement and, emer 
and archaeologists are testing ways of using GIS to explain similar patterns with human civilizations from thousands of years ago. The use of archaeology and GIS is still in its infancy. I hope to continue this new and emerging career so that I can continue to use advancing technology around me to study and excavate remains of past human civilizations like the Egyptians. In conclusion, I've discussed what GIS is, the difference between the most vital part of a GIS, raster and vector data, all the types of organizations that use GIS, and the intriguing combination of my two majors, GIS and archaeology. GIS is an exciting and new field, and archaeology is continually filling the blank pages of history. I hope to use these two very different majors in order to better understand the history of humans that have shaped our society by using the advancing technology of today. And here I want to show a video of, this is a uh, Mayan civilization that archaeologists have been excavating for many years. And this is showing you how GIS is used in an archaeological site because it shows the relationship of buildings along the rivers and the importance of like that um, Temple of the Cross up there on a uh, hill that's in the middle of nowhere. So it allows archaeologists to use GIS to see human behavior, where they settled, where the important buildings were of the time by excavating the foundations that they've been um, excavating for many years now. So this kind of shows you how you can use the raster and vector data and layer them with the polygons, lines, and points, and also um, be able to excavate a site and have it more complete, more readily available for people to visualize what the civilization would have looked like thousands of years ago. That's it.